Welcome back to my channel. Glad you can join me. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2022. I hope 2022 is going to be a good year for my photography, for my family, also for my followers and my subscribers. Let's hope that 2022 is better than 2021. Today we're going to talk about Parallax Error for panoramic photography. Now I did a tutorial on Parallax Error about a year ago and I was just looking back on some of the videos that I did last year, looking at and say, can I improve? Can I improve this so that people have a better understanding? And I'm all about self-improvement. Now today, I wanna to show you a very quick way of working out parallax error and how to remove it when we're taking panoramas. Now, some people say, is parallax error so important in panoramic photography? Well, it is and it isn't. It's a double-edged sword. If you're one of these people that just photograph panoramas, like landscape panoramas, and everything's just in the background over there, there's nothing close in your foreground, then parallax error isn't going to be your enemy. Because when I started out photographing panoramas, a lot of it was handheld, just like this. Or I would just stick it right on the tripod like that and just take where I came undone, is when I started having items in my foreground. And I wasn't aware of what parallax error was back in those days. And I'd take a panorama and I'd get home and I'd go to stitching. I'm like, oh, hang on, that card's like double vision. There's two or three images of the car. How come my program's not doing it properly? And I was blaming my tools. I didn't realize it was me. It was me that was a problem. So I reached out to a photographer who did just panoramic photography. And I said like, I sent him one of my panoramas and said, look at this what's going wrong? And he messaged me back and he goes, here's a link on Parallax Herald. This is your problem. He said, it's not the tools, it's not your software, it's you, how you take panoramas. Today, I wanna to show you a very easy way of finding out where you have to sit your camera. Now, some people call it the nodal point or whatever. I'm not gonna argue about technicalities. I call it the nodal point. Some people say it's not, it's the point, the iris point. Whatever it's called, you call it whatever you want, but I'll refer to it as a nodal point. Now, the first thing you need to do is make sure your tripod is level. Quite a lot of tripods have a little spirit level, and here, mine is telling me that my spirit level is inaccurate, but if I put this little spirit level down here, it's telling me right at the top here, I am 100% level. I can go the two ways here, and it's telling me I'm level, both in this direction here and in this direction here because you need to have it level 360 because we don't take a single photo in panoramas we just swing it around like this and this is where people come undone they level everything up this way they go yep okay they use the artificial horizon on their cameras or one of these little things here they are like yep everything's level but when you turn it this way facing over there if it's not leveled this way as well well you're going to get an arc but that's a whole different kettle of fish, like a whole different story. Today we're just talking about parallax error. Now I've just bought myself a beauty little bracket. It's made by Newer, pretty cheap, only $22. It's 200 mils long. It's already got an Arca Swiss clamp here with measurements on the side here. And if you're going to buy one of these rails, because you will need to, because you can't have the camera sitting right over the apex of the tripod like right over the center because this is where you're going to get parallax error so you need one of these rails we'll put it on here now what I'm going to do is just set it right in the middle here first this will show that the camera is sitting right in the center of the tripod so we'll put the camera on now to start with I'm using of course my Nikon D500 and the Nikon 18 to 140 now most of my panoramas are shot between 11 to 35 mil of course, I can't go to 11 on this lens, but between 11 and normally 20, I shoot it on my Takina 11 to 20. This lens here, I shoot between 18 and 35. And the reason I don't go above 35 mils at the moment is my panoramic rotator will only allow me to go to 35 mil to get at least one third overlap. So I'm gonna put the camera in landscape orientation and make sure that my eyepiece here is right in the center. Now, normally I shoot panoramas in portrait orientation because we get more megapixels because that's the idea of shooting a panorama. I don't wanna just shoot an 11 mil wide and then having to crop. If I can get away with it, I will shoot a panorama. It gets bigger file size and you get more detail in your panorama. Now, about a week ago, I went into Brisbane and I shot 
a cityscape tutorial on photographic panoramas, the do's and don'ts, and I really go into a lot of details, nearly cover A to Z on shooting panoramas, especially cityscapes. So if you're really into panoramas, but today we're just talking about Parallax Error. Now I've put my Nikon D500 here in movie mode. This way I'm going to record what I'm seeing so you can actually see how I fix Parallax Error on this camera. Now you can see I've got two markers here. One is only about a meter in front of me, maybe a meter and a half, and the other one is a good seven, eight meters away. Now when you've tried to work out Parallax Error, you're going to need two markers. One very close to the camera and one as far away as you can put it, but still being very visible on your lens because this is what's going to look like, like this. Now see, if I move my finger here, can you see they're not in line anymore? Now this is parallax error. To remove parallax error, you've got to have those two fingers lined up wherever your camera looks. And this is how you remove parallax error and you don't get any errors in your panorama. So you can see here, both poles are aligned. I'm facing in front. I move to the left here. Can you see the poles aren't lining up anymore? Move to the right. Poles aren't lining up. I have parallax error. And if I come back in the middle here, I do the same thing to 35 mils. There, center, great. Move to the left and I'm just to the side here. Move to the right. I'm just to the side. So I have parallax error both at 18 and 35 mil. Now, when we do this to fix parallax error, you have to make sure that decide which focal length you're gonna use. Now I know I'm only gonna use 18 or 35. If I was gonna use 24, I would have to do this same procedure for 24 mils. Now we're gonna start at 18 mils. Now we'll move to the left here and I can see that I've got a small gap. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out this L plate. So I'm going to come out to the left here and I can see I've got a gap. You can see it here on the camera. So I'm going to back out this Arca Swiss plate until the two of them line up. There, that's pretty close. Now I'll go to the right. Now I can see it. I'm just a midge. I like being accurate. So I'll just back it off a little bit more. There. Now I'll come back to this side here. Look at that. Perfect. So now, whether I'm all the way out here to the left or I'm all the way over there to the right, everything is going to line up. Now, at this point here, I don't have parallax error. So what I do now is I look here in the middle here and it tells me 85 mils. So this is where pen and paper come in. So I write down 18 mils equals 85 mils. Now I will do the same for 35 mils. And then what I do is I can just write this down on a piece of paper, take a photo of it and put it in my phone. So when I'm out and about and I go like, oh, I forgot what is the length that I need to put. So go, oh, okay, 18 mils equals 85 mils. So I can quickly just set it to 85 mils and I know that I'm not going to get any parallax error. So we'll go to 35 mils. Now I'm just going to come out to the side here. Now it's just about correct here. But it's just that I'm seeing, if I'm looking carefully, I'm seeing that I'm just to the edge. So I've got to come back here and push it in a little bit there. That's it, there, that's perfect. Now, what's this one telling me? Around 107. So the first one was 85, this is 107. Get my pen paper here, write 35 mils, 107 millimeters. So now I know that at 18 mils or at 35 mils, I have the measurement. And if I want to do 24 mils, then I would repeat the procedure for 24 mils. So I'm just gonna stop here and I'll put the Tekina 11 to 20 on and show you what that lens does. So I've got the Tekina 11 to 20 at 11 mils here. So let's swing to the left here. Now we can see, right in the center of the tripod, we have parallax error. If I swing it down to 20 mils, we still have parallax error, less, but we still have it. So we come back to 11 mils, we get in the middle here. Now I'm just gonna swing to the left, all the way. So I'm at the maximum distance here. Now 
I'll bring it back so I can see the two poles. Now all I do is do the same thing, just slide it back. Now when you're sliding this back, make sure that you're just releasing it because if you open it too much, the Arca Swiss clamp will come off this bracket here and if you're not holding this, you're going to lose your camera. So be very careful in this. I'm just removing it back just a little bit more. There. That looks great there. 11 mils. There. Perfect. What's this telling me now? 79, 80 mils. We'll call it 79 mils. Now all I have to do is write 11 mils for my focal length equals 79 millimeters on my Arca Swiss clamp here. We'll come back to the middle. We'll come up to 20 mils and we'll swing it to the side here. And look, look at this one. No parallax error. This lens here, this is a beauty for it. I have found that I can look here, both left and right. Now this is why I love this Takina 11 to 20, because there is no difference for parallax error between 11 and 20 mils. I can be 11, 14, 16 or 20, and I'm not going to change the parallax error. So as long as I remember that I'm on 79 mils here, I'm not going to get any difference. I don't have to worry about readjusting this Arca Swiss clamp. This is why I state that most of the time I love using this lens for my panoramas because I can adjust my focal length. I don't have to worry about moving this Arca Swiss bracket along. This is how easy it is. Now, in previous times, what I had to do was take a series of photos, like the old video showed that you take a series of photos, you go on your computer and you look to see where they line up, come back, and readjust. I find that this way, using the movie mode, I'm using movie mode to show you what's happening, but you don't have to use movie mode. You could just go in live view on your camera and just move along and go like, okay, well, that's it. My parallax has gone. It will take you less than 10 minutes. And I am firm believer that if you're going to do something, then you do it right. So I hope now you can see how easy parallax error is to fix on your camera. Only takes about 10 minutes of your time. And if you're really serious about taking panoramas, just like if you're serious about your photography, then you're just going to go that extra step to make sure that your photos just as good as you can get them. And you're not going to accept second best. So thanks for watching. If you found value in this video, give me a big thumbs up. I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done yet. Enjoy photography, especially your panoramic photography. If you've got any questions and all that, put them in the comment box below. I answer all your comments and I'll see you next time.